Hello, my name is Diana Rose Yellow, and I am a student at Intellitech College, and I am a student in um, the term of 105. Right, um, <clears throat> I have been working on the um, assignment uh, LRS um, essay research uh, paper, and so what I came up or what I my topic would be um, gonorrhea, a sexually transmitted infection. I chose this because um, I'm pretty interested in um, infectious diseases. Uh, when I was um, at the uh, attending the Diné College in Chiprock, New Mexico, I was a peer educator with the HIV and AIDS program. For me, it was like presenting for the students that was attending the college there. So I was focusing on the students that were between the ages of 19 and all the way up to 30. So my my takeaway for that particular um, particular education was in abstinence. I was hardcore into abstinence, and then I taught. I educated a lot of the community members around the surrounding areas. I am an alumni of the Diné College in Shiprock, New Mexico, as well as an alumni over at Fort Lewis College in Durango, Colorado. Currently, I am working for towards a medical assistance um, uh, degree, so that way I can carry on my education purposes. So anyways, um, my, my topic is on gonorrhea. Uh, the um, beginning of it is, what is gonorrhea? What are the effects and the infections? Well, we're going to go into that. So gonorrhea is a sexually transmitted infection. It is passed between men and women, and also it can be passed between men and men. This particular sexual transmitted infection has changed in strains, which is, uh, which is, means the bacterial um, infection that has has a strain of DNA and um, also microbiological systems in that bacteria um, infection. It has been difficult to treat due to its developing resistance to certain antibiotics. So through the years, we'll go through the explanation of why, what antibiotics or um, what antibiotic is the main one that they use. So it is an infection that is a bacterium, also named at, as a Latin term for this bacterium is called Neisseria gonorrhea. Gonorrhea is a bacterial infection. It has been on the radar for C, from CDC to mo monitor in our country. And interestingly enough, it is more common for men to contract it more than women. So, on to the first point of this presentation. When women, we're going to focus on women and what the signs are and what their symptoms are going to be. So, when women contract the infection, it usually doesn't display any signs of symptoms. So, when they do, the signs are burning during urination, uh, periods between cycles, menses between cycles abnormal vaginal discharge. They have more of vaginal discharge than normal. Uh, they have the abdominal pains and also pain during sexual intercourse. So let's go take a look at the uh, picture that I have to show um, what I'm talking about exactly. So this is a picture of a woman's reproductive system. So here we have the fallopian tubes on each side, and then we have the ovaries on each side beside the fallopian tubes, as well as the uterus, the cervix, which is the area where they take usually take usually take samples from your from your provider does that, and also your vagina. So this this particular uh, reproductive system shows down here of what this infection can can um, can do. So most women have no symptoms 
like I said, sexually transmitted bacteria. This can spread upwards to cause scarring and blockage of the tubes. So during sexual intercourse, the man's penile area will disperse the bacterium into the uterus. And while it's going up, it will go into the fallopian tubes and cause scarring and also some blockage of the, of the, of the uh, fallopian tubes. This, this is a concerning because of the age bracket of these young women that possibly could contract this if they're not using safe sex. And when they do, then it can um, cause long-term effects such as sterility uh, problems in conceiving um, because it does some damage into the reproductive system. So when you go to your provider, say a young woman goes to her provider and needs to get tested for the symptom, need to get tested for gonorrhea, they do a, a pelvic exam in the with the provider does a pelvic exam. And when they do, they usually have a plastic spatula to take away the, the collection of the bacterium that is surrounding the cervix and they place it onto a plate. And so they take it off and, and take it to a, um, to a, uh, get it tested. Sometimes they have like these rapid tests that can test for it. And usually it takes up to, um, say about three, uh, 24 hours to three days to get back test pos positive or negative. So let's go take a look at the, the, the male side of what men have to deal with as far as, uh, symptoms go. Men, when they contract the infection, this includes the burning during urination, typical because it's the same as women. Uh, they develop swollen and painful testicles. So their testicles become inflamed and uh, they become swollen. So they can discharge with white, yellowish, greenish color from the urinary mitis, which is the opening of the tip of the penile area on the top. And it can like, you know, leak, sort of a leakage part of a discharge. So when we, when I um, mention these things, let's take a look at what these pictures show. As you can see, this is the male reproductive system. Uh, you have your urinary tract um, area. Sometimes they become infected when when this when they are infected with this bacterium, as well as the women, they get infected with urinary tract infection. As far as the men are concerned, um, urinary tract infection, infected kidneys, they have a burning sensation when they're ur urinating, inflamed of the penile, so the the penis uh, tip of the penis gets swollen as well while they're discharging all that bacterium. They have swollen testicles. Of course, they have discharges, as I mentioned, from the penis. So all of these symptoms comes with the um, infection of the gonorrhea. So this is a picture of the, the gonorrhea infection. This right here is the penile entry where it is discharging the, the substance out of the penis. Also, you can get um, swollen areas such as your hands you get sores in your feet you get sores this is a picture of a feet a foot and then um, this is a picture of what the bacterium looks like with that as we looked at the symptoms of what gonorrhea puts on to men and female we can take a look at another picture which is probably, this goes hand in hand with the pictures that I showed you. These are the symptoms. Here we have the penis discharging yellow, yellow, whitish, greenish substance. We have the cervix here with the spe speculum opening up 
the vaginal area to take a look at a clear view of the cervix. We also have symptoms that display like sores around the mouth. Uh, we have eye conjunctivitis that occurs with the eyes. So usually the patient usually has conjunctivitis because of the, uh, because of the bacterial disease or infection. And this is a little picture of the, the, the bac bacteria. Also, this displays a woman with abdominal pain. So these are all the symptoms that comes with gonorrhea. <clears throat> when we look at that, when I mentioned that they, the doctor takes a pelvic exam of the women and scrape off with a spatula of this, the collection of the specimen, and they put it onto a plate and then they take it to a lab or they have a rapid you know rapid test but foremost when it, when they take give it to a microbiologist the microbiologist will then um, take the swab off of it put it on onto a plate uh, it's an auger with nutrients in it for this bacteria to grow and usually the bacteria will grow onto a plate that has a lot of nutrients and when the nutrients, they'll feed the bacteria and they'll grow onto the plate and you'll see streaks and stuff. So let's go take a look at that picture. And it's right here, as you can see. This is a picture of an Neisseria gonorrhea. It is a causing agent of the gonococcal infections. This bacteria is a gram negative. It's non-motile, non-sporing, spore-forming. It's a Diplococcus bacterium. It belongs to the family of the Neisseria A. I think that's how you say it. Uh, it's a Latin term for this family. But concerning the bacteria on how it grows, it grows in a, a circular, like dip dots. That's why they call it a diplococcus because it's, it's like a dip and then it's caucus is means circular round. It's gram negative, which means that it is a, a bacteria that's pretty hard to try to treat. In some instances, it's a very difficult kind of bacteria um, as far as resistance goes. Some infections that have this diplococcal uh, shape uh, usually become resistant to the to the antibiotics. So this is a picture of the the auger plate. I believe this is a blood auger. Sometimes it grows. They grow it on a blood auger, and then they blow. They grow it onto a chocolate auger. This over here is an image of a bacterium that is magnified at 600 times. As you can see, it is a oval bean shape. Its size is 0.6 micrometers to 1.0 micrometers in diameter. And as you can tell, or you can see, the circular and the diplococcal shape of the bacteria, when it's a gram-negative bacteria and you stain it, it usually comes up or usually gram negatives come up in a reddish pink purplish color. So it stains into a red color. That's when you know it is a gram negative because of the staining of the bacterial bacteria. Now the picture of the Neisseria gonor gonorrhea is a causing agent, which I already mentioned that, and it is gram negative. And the only way to treat it is difficult, as I mentioned. So the second point is to this uh, gonor gonorrhea, gonorrhea um, for the past 30 years, it has been a threat to the public health in the United States. According to the D CDC, cephalosporin, Cephla, cephalosporin, 
sporin. Cephalosporin is an antibiotic that has been the foundation of the treatment of the gonorrhea. So this particular sexually transmitted infection has changed in strains and has been difficult to treat due to its developing resistance to certain antibiotics. Again, it, it, is, um, in, it is resistant to some antibiotics and through the 30 years that they've been trying to treat this infection, it has become resistant to the drugs that they have tried to treat patients with. And that's pretty concerning with what, how this infection is becoming a, a superbug, almost like a superbug. And it makes it hard to try to treat this and make it obsolete from the human body. So as I mentioned, samples are taken from the cervix of the female, as well as the male, the male area of the urethral opening of the penile area. They swab around it and that's how they get their uh, sample from that area. And then they um, take a test, a rapid test on it. And then also samples are also taken from the from the rectum area and also at the mouth, from the mouth. So I found a, a graph. It is a, it is a bar graph of the rates and reported cases of gonorrhea and they go by age and sex of this, um, of this particular bacterial infection. So we'll take a look at the graph here that I have, um, you can see it, yep, right here is from, I found this graph on the CDC website, and as you can see, the, um, there's the male side of the graph, and then the female was what they, they look at, and it's per 100,000 in population of the female and the, the male, um, groups, so as we see, this is, um, Bar graph showing rates of reported cases of gonorrhea in the United States by age group and by sex. So, and this is depicting from 2018. So the, the reported rates of gonorrhea cases continue to be the highest among adolescents and young adults, which is, you know, pretty understanding why. Um, usually they are pretty high in, around that age. And in 2018, the highest rates among females were observed among those aged 20 to 24 years of age. So before I get into the numbers, or before I get into the female numbers between those two ages of 20 and 24, I just kind of want to examine this graph a little bit more, especially when it's the age group of 10, between 10 and 14 years of age. This I didn't understand why there was a small rate of, of children who was between these two ages of 10 and 14. So my thoughts were of why this number was the way it was. And my conclusion was probably sexual violation, rape among the young uh, children and usually that's prevalent in the United States, especially today, um, more prevalent for children to be raped and violated. <clears throat> and then, um, so then you go into 15 and 19 years old. The male side is a little less than the female side because the female side is a little bit higher between 15 and 19 years old, which again, possible um, rape count rape reports and stuff like that between the 15 and 19 years of age and also sexual activity more sexual activity is happening and occurring for the for the males and the females so as we carry on um, between 20 and 24 years uh, there is 702.6 cases per hundred thousand 100,000 females. 
And 15 to 19 years old, as I mentioned, is 548.1 cases per 100,000 uh, females. As you can see, these two on this side, the 15 to 19 is high, 20 to 24 is a little bit high on the female side. So then we're going to take a look at the male side of the graph. So among, among the males, the rate was the highest among those between the ages of 20 and 24, 720.9 cases per 100,000 males. And then if we look further, it's 20, between 25 and 29 years of age is 674.0 cases per 100,000 males. So again, on the male side, we look at the numbers that they are high, especially between the ages of 20 and 24. And then I, I mentioned in my earlier presentation that males are in, that are the highest in the rates of um, contracting the gonorrhea. And what I think and what my thoughts are is because of the contraction between men and men, there's, a, there's the rectal infections and also the oral infections that happen on, in, the homos, in the homosexual side of the, the spectrum. So we can look at both heterosexual, maybe there's a mix of heterosexual and homosexuals that are in this bracket right here. So there's uh, that um, that can contribute to those numbers of, of both um, of, of why men are a little bit higher than women. So as I look at this chart, I also look at the dip down in age where it goes down to below about 50 between the ages of 55 and 64. They still contract it and, you know, between the young and the old. But surprisingly, 75 years and up, it takes a bit of a spike. And my thoughts again, as I sit and as I look at this chart, is that in this particular age group, um, elders are pretty vulnerable to being violated sexually, especially if they're staying in a nursing home. We have a lot of news going on that that uh, the elders are being sexually violated in nursing homes. Uh, there's possibility that when they have a long-term relationship with their only and one spouse, that this one spouse passes away and they start to date. That could be a contribution to that number, but I do see that this number could be a contribution to the sexual violation in nursing homes as they are um, being violated in that in that area. So we looked at that chart and let's carry on to the next final point which is why it's important to to everyone, for everyone to remember. So in my presentation, it's it's more like an education piece and knowing what the effects are of this, of this infection. So it's important to be educated in the lifestyle of safe sex, especially when you are sexually active and at any age. And so um, be aware of the complications of not just gonorrhea, but all sexual transmitted infections, <coughs> excuse me, such as gonorrhea and chlamydia go hand in hand. If you have chlamydia, if you contract chlamydia, you might have gonorrhea. More than likely, gonorrhea and chlamydia will be together. If you have gonorrhea, you may have chlamydia. So you have to be tested for those two infections. Uh, HIV, AIDS, you contract HIV, you have AIDS. There's more of a medical research, more, more of a medicine that's out there that can help maintain the, 
the offset of going into AIDS. And so you have syphilis, which is a bacterium infection. You have other sexually transmitted diseases that are out there that are ones that are bacterial infections and ones that are long-term infections that you have to live with, such as herpes. Herpes you have to live with for the rest of your life and maintain it with medicines and um, prescriptions. So with that said, <clears throat> having to, to deal with all of this information, the one thing that is most um, most effective is abstinence. If you can abstain from sex, that is 100% effective to, to abstain from sex and also to keep yourself safe from contracting any kind of infection or diseases at all. So what the thing is, is that um, especially for women who are at a young vulnerable age, they can, can, they can if they do not get this treatment that they're supposed to, and when after they have sex with somebody who is infected, they can I have this right here. They can contract. Um, they can um, develop the pelvic inflammatory disease, which is PID. This I got off the CDC website. So this is a pamphlet on the information on pelvic pelvic inflammatory disease among women. It can infect the reproductive system. Uh, also cause issues with, you know, the onset of sterility. So it's more, it's, it's much more important to make sure that you understand what the symptoms are. So I believe in education and educating our young people to really take a look at protecting themselves and really trying to keep themselves healthy and be aware of things like this. Also on the CDC website, there's pamphlets on fact sheets, fact sheets that can be given to uh, young adults, to anybody really, um, new, newly divorced people who are newly single and going out and trying to find somebody. Um, these, these fact sheets are available on CDC website and they have the most if, um, more information about how to protect yourself and how to uh, to talk to your doctors how to um, be involved with your partner and to to really be honest with your partners in that situation also on the cdc website they also have the, the explanation on the the antibiotics that are out there and what they should do and how this is concerning to the United States as far as being almost like a superbug. Really hard to try to heal this infection, especially with a, a bacterium that can and possibly be, um, be resistant to the, to the antibiotics. So hopefully in the near future, there will be, there will be more research done. There will be more of a set or much more better antibiotics that will be available than the one that they have now. Uh, they've tried for 30 years. Uh, they've been through many of the antibiotic prescriptions to, to fight this, this bacterial infection. And through the years, every one of those prescription drugs and antibiotics has gonorrhea has been resistant to. So it's been a, a real concerning thing for, for um, them to fight and to really uh, figure out a way to, you know, to make the antibiotic better than it is now. So hopefully that will happen in the near future. So that is my information and my presentation on gonorrhea the Neisseria gonorrhea in Latin terms. So I appreciate you taking the time to watch my presentation and I hope this is helpful and I will talk to you later. Thank you very much for allowing me to take time.